Do you want to learn how to show speed and motion in your photos? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to do a panning shot like this one. What's up guys, Reggie B Photo here and welcome back to the channel. For those of you who are new, my name is Reggie Balasteros and I'm a wedding photographer based in the San Francisco Bay Area. So in most photography situations, our goal is to capture tack sharp images. And the typical way to do this is to use a high enough shutter speed to freeze everyone and everything in the scene. But this results in a frozen moment in time. Basically anyone or anything that's moving will appear still and frozen. So in order to convey motion and speed, we actually have to do the opposite and intentionally capture motion blur. And one of the best ways to do this is to take a panning shot. So the basic idea for panning photography is that you as a photographer stay set in one position and you pivot with the camera tracking a subject in motion. This results in an image with a relatively sharp subject with a nice blurry background. This is extremely useful for photographing fast moving subjects like cars, bicyclists, or in this case, a child on a theme park ride. So with that said, the panning technique only seems to work best with subjects that are on a relatively straight trajectory or maybe on a predictable path like a road or a track. In this particular video, I'll be using the Fujifilm X-T3, but you can take panning shots with virtually any camera that you have as long as you have control over the shutter speed. For the shutter speed, you want to select a shutter speed that is slower than what you would typically use to freeze the action. I personally start at 1 over 30th of a second and go from there, either adjusting faster or slower. Keep in mind that anything over 1 over the focal length of your lens will result in adding some camera shake in addition to the already motion blur of the panning. On the flip side, a shutter speed that's too fast will just basically freeze the image and show no blur, which will basically negate the speed effect. So finding the perfect balance of the shutter speed for each situation is very key. When picking a vantage point, position yourself so your view of the action will not be obstructed by anybody or anything. It's also ideal if you position yourself so that your shoulders are parallel to the subject's path of motion if they're traveling in a straight line. If the path is curved or circular like a merry-go-round, point yourself at the apex of that curve. As the subject approaches, track it smoothly with your camera. It's best to have your feet set, elbows close and tight to your body, and pivoting only at your hips, while simultaneously tracking the subject and keeping them in the same spot of your frame. If your camera has decent autofocus, set it to continuous autofocus. And experiment with your particular camera and the situation to see what type of autofocus area mode you should be using for this situation. At first, I was actually using the zone AF mode with a 3x3 square, but I would notice that my camera would move the autofocus off of the face at some times. So I changed the autofocus to the single point AF um, in continuous autofocus and had better results. For the XE3, I also changed the custom autofocus settings to continuous set 2, which is basically to ignore any obstacles and continue to track the subject. If your camera doesn't have fast autofocus, don't worry because you've already positioned yourself correctly and the motion is predictable. All you have to do is pre-focus on the spot. You can use a test subject if you need to, take a few test shots, and even stop down the aperture a little bit to give you some wiggle room with that focus, and you're pretty much good to go from there. If you can, set your camera to a continuous drive mode, which basically shoots multiple shots. The key is to start tracking your subject early and engage autofocus and track your subject and shoot through the moment until it's already passed. If you let go of the shutter prematurely, you might miss that perfect shot. So the last step is to have the right expectation in mind. If you're trying to do a panning shot for the first time, make sure you take it with an experimental attitude. You definitely don't want to be trying this out for the first time for something that's critical or shot that you really just can't miss. And even once you master all the settings and technique, there's still a little bit of luck involved as the sharpness of your subject will depend on how much the subject actually moves. For example, in this photo, you can see that the horse is sharp, which verifies that my panning technique was actually pretty good, but my son's face is out of focus because he was laughing and moving his face a little bit. Because you're using a slower shutter speed, you have to have the right expectation in mind. 
So for a good shot, you can expect the subject to be relatively sharp, but you'll have a nice blurry motion blurred background. So beginner or veteran, I hope you learned something new in this video about panning photography. Remember for this technique, practice makes perfect. It's good to prepare before you take the shot, but at the end of the day, there's a lot of luck involved. So keep at it and keep striving for that perfect panning shot. If you want to see more photography technique videos like this, hit that thumbs up button and let me know down in the comments below what you plan to take with this panning photography technique. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I post a new Fujifilm or photography video just like these two every other week. And if you want to see more of my photo work, be sure to follow me on Instagram at, at @reggiebphoto for a new post every single day. All right, that's it for me. Remember to get out, go shoot, and I'll catch you guys in the next yeah. one.